Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They'll be busy right now. Yeah, you know, 15 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> A place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree. It's probably absolutely trolleyed. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm not going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Kavina. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Oh, that's the red sign. Do you want to answer? Do, do, do. Hello, King's A&E staff nurse. Yeah, hi. Yeah. OK, all right then, lovely. Thanks, bye. Oh, lovely. Fall, four to five stairs, landed on back of head, nil loss of consciousness, intoxicated, left arm numbness and paralysis. Red phone, 20 to 25 minutes. Red phone, 20 to 25 minutes. They said he's very intoxicated. <laughs> Alcohol is one of the biggest causes of injury seen by the emergency department. On an average weekend, about a quarter of the patients are drunk. It drives me nuts that people drink as much as they do. It drives me nuts that people take drugs and then come to us half an hour later saying that they feel funny. Well, what did you expect? If you weren't feeling funny, then you bought the wrong drug. This gentleman, his name is Sean, he's 39. Basically, he's fallen down about four or five steps on the landing. He's been drinking since 10 o'clock this morning due to a family bereavement yesterday. He's seen he's got um, pain and tenderness to the back of his neck. Okay. He's, had set, he's had a hell of a lot to drink, no drugs apparently. Yeah, there is. So okay. Oh, might be. Yeah. Do you want a second capula or do you just want uh, one? He'll need, he'll need bloods. What's he got? Yeah, just, just his bloods is great. Yeah. John, I'm Marie. I'm just going to take some blood on this side, OK? Did he have opiates? Uh, no. What's he had? I didn't hear. Oh, drunk. 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 Been drinking oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, right. Come on, please. What's, what's the matter, my friend? Please, yeah. What? I need my mum. Oh, uh, maybe she's coming in, I'm not sure. Sean, if you need to be sick at any stage... Oh, uh, it's more up, yeah? Well, we'll get her in in a moment. Can you take this fucking thing off my neck, please? Well, not just yet, just because we're worried about your neck, that's all. But as soon as we can, we will. I need to speak to my mum. I don't know if she's here yet, Sean, but just if wait one moment. She is. Come with me in the ambulance. Yes, Sean. Can you bring her in? Is that all right? Thanks a lot. We're going to bring her in now, OK? Yeah, all right. Well. Excuse me. Thanks. Hey there. How you going? I think, he, um, I think he really is pretty keen to see you anyway. Do you want to pop up the end of here? 16. Oh, really? OK. My name is Graham anyway. I'm one of the consultants here. Mum? Um, is there a reason you, you don't want to go up the, front, the top end of the bed? Mum? OK. Has he been abusive towards you tonight? Mum? I'm just, to, just talking. Just, to, just to say hello if you want. Who are you? I'm here. I can't look at you, right? Yeah, I, I think I've got a problem with your neck. Yeah, I've heard. I'm just talking to the doctor about it. Just hold on, please. I'm here. I came in, I went upstairs, and the first thing I did was laugh, because the way I see him, he looked like the hunchback of Notre Dame. And I just laughed. And then Linda said, oh, let's get a camera. And she took a photo of him. She said, me and you will have a laugh about this tomorrow, Sean. Is it hard? 
So, we'll just have to work out exactly what the situation is with the neck and then and we'll go from there. Red phone, ten minutes. That's red phone, ten minutes. Oh, this is a trouble call. He fell down about eight or nine stairs at the embankment uh, with a lost consciousness for about a minute. A second red phone. A second patient who's fallen down the stairs drunk. A drunk fell down is a big one. I think what happens is they're on the inside where it's nice and light and they've got a skin full and then they open the door and it's all dark out there and half of their senses are already shattered from all the alcohol they've drunk and then they lose one, their vision, and um, they, over they go, you know, they fall over. Um, who have we got? No one. Yeah, mate. Is that you that fell down the stairs? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Should we sort you out? No, I should. I better find one. We're gonna hold. We're gonna hold team in there waiting for you. Yeah, mate. How long are you to be? Where's your fag? Right, no, no, no. It's all over. All right, well. Come over. I've got to go. Sorry. Right. Well, yeah. There's a whole trauma team waiting for you in there because we thought you might have been unwell. <laughs> He's out there having a fag. He's. <laughs> He's going, no, no, I really need a fag, mate. He's just standing there like, with his hoodie on. And... So are you going to see Well, he's out there. He's, he's obviously in control of his faculties, so if he wants to go stay out in there and have a fag, he'll have a fag. That's all right. That's all right. Well, tell you what, you can help us out. If... Just, just take your gear off there. We'll have a look at you. Interestingly, actually, I, um, it was on one occasion I kind of had too much to drink. And I fell down the stairs, and I ended up as, as you know, uh, <laughs> a casualty in A and E, <laughs> which is mortifying for me, obviously, for a number of reasons. Hi, thank you. You've been drinking so obviously, huh? Yeah. Yeah. How much have you had to drink? I can't tell you. Just turn away from me again. My head is fucked, mate. Seriously, like, I, I've had a lot of fights in my life, mate. Yeah. I've had a lot of tear ups and this and that. Take a nice deep breath. Deep breath. Head out. Go on. Don't get me wrong, bro. Yeah. I've fallen over drunk before, yeah. Yeah. And I've done this and I've done that, yeah. But this is hardcore. Okay. Right. Let's have a little look. Two. The back of my head is killing me. It's a fair old bump you got. When you get a bang on the head, what we're concerned about is not just the cut and the, and the bump on the outside, it's the chance of a bruise or a bleed inside where the brain is, yeah? There's no signs of that going on at the minute, but we've always got to think think ahead, you know, what, what chances are you developing that, well, yeah? So I've had some terms in my life. I've yes. OK. Right. I'll just I've put this around. Lump, lump like that, mate. It's we'll, not mean. we'll put a drip in so we can take some blood, yeah? No, mate, no, I'm not having no drips. Are you sure? I don't have any drips, mate. Is that right? Yeah. I think, I think we need to watch you for a while. It's probably going to be an overnight stay, to be honest. Come on, Bill Bates, though, mate. She can't. Oh, I've got to go, then. Well, she, can, she, she might be able to sit in a chair next to you. That's all right. Well, she that sounds fair me. on her. She can touch me up when you're not looking. She might want to sleep. She doesn't want to sleep. She wants to touch me up. who speaks Spanish, could they come to the front reception, please? Anyone who speaks Spanish? Anybody who speaks Spanish? Yeah. I am. I was feeling drunk like maybe three hours ago, but now I could do anything right now, speak to anyone and do anything, and I don't feel drunk. I'm not drunk, I'm not, I don't feel like I did yesterday, no. Because I sobered up. I feel quite weird, right? Do you want some water? 
No, 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 here, yeah, I'll just, uh... Do like a sobriety test. Make him walk in a line. Say vamos to him. That means let's go. No, he needs to. I need, he needs to stand up. He's in hospital. Come on now, I'm not having this. I do feel like Mrs. Mop sometimes. You know, it's like a, they've been too drunk to get to their bedroom, so we're, we're, they just stopped off in A&E and, you know, so I'm there to look after them, mop their brows so they wake up and then, you know, kind of feed the hangover with a couple of packets of crisps and a can of Coke and some coffee. <sighs> oh, I'll have to keep him up here. He's in a real state, isn't he? Oh, for goodness sake, come on now. Right, we, we might as well walk him into a cubicle now, after all this kerfuffle. It'll have to be number 11. We might as well just keep the drunks together. Goodness me! You've had a good night, haven't you? Did you go out? Have a drink? Did you have a good night? Did you dance? <laughs> Woohoo! I like it. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a little boogie boogie. <laughs> now, one question. Is that hair real? <laughs> Look, all my boyfriends. <laughs> oh, you're all lined up, keep, keep them done. No, I don't, just don't know which one to choose. I think it would have to be number 10. My little William. A few years ago, <laughs> this very posh boy came in and He'd had a bottle of whiskey. We'd go to take his blood pressure and he'd be like, oh, girls, come and get me. And oh, Jesus, now how much of this can we actually take? And we were saying, he was saying, where's my girlfriend? Where's my girlfriend? So we're like, oh, she's up there on that trolley there. That's not my girlfriend. Mm, that's the girl you were kissing when you got out of the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit back. Some people expect McDonald's treatment to be in, not wait, and go. Oi! They don't understand that, like, you know, you have to collate blood results, x-rays, get things organised. Like, you know, it's not like Eeyore. You don't walk through the door and the doors scan you and you have all results available to you. No, can you come here? Oi! They don't get that. Don't walk away. Excuse me, sir. Can you call properly? In the hospital, sir. Okay. Yeah? 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 Speak this up. You're I know you that. You're treating me that I'm really here, yeah? Shall I call you, ma'am, and ask her to tell you Listen. what's going Listen. on why we're trying to... Listen, yes. take this thing off my neck, yeah? We'll see who's the last up, yeah? We can't do it. Exactly. Yes. You know what's going to happen to you. Yeah, and you know what's going to happen to you as well. Do you know that? No, well, yeah? well, I'm right here, right yeah, now. Yeah, well, he's talking to the doctor right now. Yeah? Can so you hear? She's me for a fact, yes. can't she? We can't. No, you my mum can. My mum can. He has actually broken a bone in his neck. The good news is that he's alive and his blood pressure and his pulse and, and you know, he's got both both movement in, in his leg, uh, both his legs have, have normal movement. There's only damage to the nerves that are into the arm, and there's a possibility that you know, with intervention, that that might improve as well. Did you hear what he said? When oh, he was what in did he? Up? What did he, he say? If he's got broken his neck, he's going he's to kill himself. I'll tell you what. I don't want to hear it. I just yeah, don't. yeah. Has he quietened down? He, he's quietened down a little bit. Hello. Hello. John, the doctor's just talking to your mum right now, okay? No, can you come here? Oi! Don't walk away. Fucking evil bastard. Well, 
I had one too many maybe. And tripped over the clothes horse, went down the stairs head first, broke my neck. Hello! I see everything that's happened in my life flashed in front of me. I was just sitting there thinking, when's the light going to come then? That's normally what happens, isn't it? Well, that's what I've been told normally happens. Your life flashes in front of you and then you see the tunnel with the light at the end of it. But it never came. I'm both on it now. Stay still. Why have you got me up here? We're not Hopefully. Home. I hope you're happy. You might. Stay still, bro. Stay still. Go and go home. You'll be all right tomorrow. I'm worried about it, babe. I ain't talked to you when you're like this, Sean. Stay with me, Sean's been through a hell of a lot in his life. Through beatings and everything else. He's following in his dad's footsteps because his dad was an alcoholic. I feel responsible for a lot of it because I think I've, I've not brought him up right. To be honest, I've had four kids put in care. So I don't feel as if I've been a proper mother to my children. Sorry. People come straight in to you from an experience and they've had a, an accident or they've been assaulted. They may shout, they may cry. It's because they're frightened or, you know, they haven't had the chance to talk about it or understand what's happened to them. So you face people when they're at their most raw. <laughs> Which one's the best, you think? That one? Or... That's quite cool. <laughs> When was the blood pouring out? Though? Well, you know, when you were just sitting down outside the park, where all those people were helping you. Oh, yeah. And it really was just pouring down your face. He claims to have been assaulted. He says he lives uh, on the streets and a passerby assaulted him and he's got a bit of a haematoma, but apparently no loss of consciousness. He's going to knock out any doctor that goes to see him and he's going to kick off when he gets to the cells. I don't know what he's going to do to the nurses that assess him. He's a cute police officer, though, so it's OK. It's maybe right, we'll he's leave, quite sweet. Well, they, sweet face. you sort him out. Yeah, they do. He seems a sweet, he seems got a sweet face, doesn't he? Right. Hello, Majors. A man that can't handle his drink is just horrible. You know, you can see the most loveliest man comes into a &E, you can see that he's taken such pride in his appearance before he went out, and then he's just awful. Babe, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I can't find my phone. I think they took my phone. I don't know where it's gone. It might be in my pocket. Look in my pocket. 26th year old Andrew has been arrested after a day of heavy drinking. Yeah, I've got a bottle of water and I've got a bottle of water. been arrested after a day of heavy drinking. Who took the fucking phone? You Please. stop, you no. let go of me, listen and you let go of me. Andrew, let the fuck go of me. Andrew, listen to me, OK? They're pissing me listen off. Listen to me. Because I ain't been arrested. Right, I've been arrested for... You want the end, well, you'll take me over. You like it that way, do you? I ain't no. fucking no. Right. You are a fucking fuck. To be honest with you, I, I can't remember too much about it. Well, you're talking mega, mega, mega consumption of pints, 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 spirits, pints, spirits, and whatever else, you know. Ah! 
Who may as well sit for him in the van? Oh! Yeah. Ah, you're fucking me up! Ah, ah, Andrew, ah. what are you doing? Yeah, well, fucking right. let go of me then! Andrew! Fucking let go of me! No, ah. I'm just stop falling over! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stop being ridiculous! Yeah, the van, the van hasn't been cleaned, so you may as well put it in the van. Right, we'll I remember putting my hand through a window, not, not intentionally, but yeah, that was the way it happened. Andrew! The police come. I start getting a little bit rude to him, he started getting a little bit rude back and I ended up spitting on the floor and that's what he arrested me for. He was going to take me straight to the station because of my, my hand was in such a bad way. That's why I had to come in here first. Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! took me back to the, to the station. I felt horrid, 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 horrid. Uh, not a good feeling. Uh, flashbacks, and I was like, oh, what did I do? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm genuinely, genuinely sorry about what, what happened that night. Um, if I could take it all back, I would, definitely. 100,000%. Oh, Do you want me to find... Do you want me to find as well? I almost want to go to sleep. Put your head, if you're getting dizzy. No, I don't. Uh, oh dear. I fucking hate hospitals. Everyone hates hospitals. It's fine. G'day, mate. Sorry to bother you. We've got a bed for you in a sec. Hey, have you got any allergies? Ben. Are you allergic to anything, mate? Ben, come on, mate. Are you allergic to anything? Squeeze my hand. Squeeze my hand, mate. Ben! Squeeze my hand. Squeeze. Ben, come on, wake up. Fuck off. Well, you need to, you need to cooperate, mate. This is going to happen a few times overnight, so be prepared. Ben, squeeze my hand. Ben. Squeeze my hand, mate. Just squeeze it. Ben! Wake up and... Don't talk to me like I'm a fucking mug, all right? Well, wake up and cooperate. Squeeze my hand, mate. If I talk to you like that, well, I'll be sitting here right now. Listen, if you talk to me like that, I'll kick you out on the street, right? It's easy as that. Don't talk to you like my mug, then. Well, it's cooperate with me. It's as simple as that. Fucking hell, mate, all right? Just cooperate with me. It's as simple as that, yeah? If you cooperate with me, then I'll walk, walk away and sit down again. Squeeze my hand. Good man. Now, listen, are you allergic to anything? I don't know. So you can't have you can't have pills that affect your asthma. You allergic to anything else? No. You give, give people warnings, and if they're not going to toe the line, then we, we don't. You know, we're not, we're not punching bags for them. That piece of work over there is for City U. No. no. A bit worried he might survive. That's <laughs> fine. Out of hours service for the GP, it might be better to do that and then Thank they'll you. figure out whether you need to come to A &E or not. You'll be you'll go to triage, you'll be assessed, they'll decide which bit of A &E to go to. You'll probably have a long wait. And then the doctor will see you. Alright. Okay, bye. Have you ever in your life phoned A and E for advice? Hello, I was wondering if you could help me. I 
I think I've got tonsillitis. Just do your temperature quickly on your under your mouth, please. Right, thank you. Close your mouth. That's it. Whilst drunk patients can prove difficult for staff, drunk and abusive mental health patients can be far more challenging. I think she's called saying she's taken an overdose of um, three quarters of a bottle of vodka or a bottle of vodka and apparently 10, 15, 20, maybe 50 paracetamols. They're her words. She has got mental health issues. She's on medication. I've known her for quite a few years and dealt with situations like this all the time. I don't believe... OK, I'm not a medical person. I know nothing about the overdose thing. I don't believe she's taking that many tablets. She's attention-seeking. Having brought the patient to King's, the police are now keen to leave her there. No, I'm going to The truth of the matter is I'm not willing to stay here with her all night on a Saturday night when I've got people... I, I, I know it sounds really... And I know your face is looking... Well, it's our job. But, what yeah, but she's also do? a danger to herself and other people, the way she's behaving. She's unmanageable here. What are you doing? Why are you a man blowing the girl? We've had occasions where the person has been brought in decuffed and got, they've gone and they've literally, I remember a guy, he went absolutely crazy and it was frightening. I was petrified. There was minimal staff in the department at that time because it was a night shift so it had quietened down a bit and he'd picked up the big metal bins and he was throwing them around the department and it was really frightening. No, I'm only going to piss yet yeah? um, and my mum, yeah. oh, fuck that's really in the city. She will calm down, she normally does. She doesn't like the blokes, which doesn't help. Um, how come I've got here. My only other issue is I have no way of getting back because I was the only driver and I didn't bring my car here. My concern is, is that I've got a million and one other patients Absolutely. here. I have to ensure staff yep. and patient safety. And the way she is at the moment, it's she's um, she's quite unmanageable. Yep. She's quite a risk of going off and hurting herself. There are sharks everywhere. Yep. There are cannulas everywhere. She's being aggressive with you guys. She's yep. at risk of hurting herself. Sorry, excuse me. No, it's OK. She's refusing treatment at the moment and just being a total nightmare. Excuse me, hi. Can I have a, a quick word? Claire, number six and uh, surgeons now. Yep. Yeah. Um, they've just looked up. She's a risk to hurting other people as well. It's such a risky place. I've got so many vulnerable people here. It's I can't afford to be hit. I can't afford other patients to be hit and other members of staff. She is very volatile. The way I've been trained, right, as police officer... Our security won't stop her walking out. OK, I'm just saying from, from our mm. side, from the police side, the way we've been trained... She's not manageable in this situation, and so... Take it up with Graham, our police officer, our head officer. Can I take your numbers as well? Yeah, it's for... uh, has 861. You feel kind of helpless in a way that if they're going to leave this patient here, no matter what you say, how on earth are you going to cope with this patient who is clearly needs to be in a place of safety, you know, plus all the other drunken patients and the other patients with mental health problems? It, it is really, really makes you feel quite helpless. Hi, she's left the department. The... So we'll have to call the police again, won't we? What are we going to do? This is ridiculous. It's so frustrating. Kevin, I had CT on the phone. They said you brought somebody to Neuro CT that should have gone to General CT. So we've got... Listen, we've got somebody here that needs to go to Neuro CT. So when you take them to Neuro CT, if you transfer the other one back to General CT. Thank you, Kevin. Are you free, Nikki? Sean? Since I've turned 18, a lot of the injuries that I've suffered, yeah, have been drink-related. 
I've been run over about four or five times. I've been smacked across the head five times with a claw hammer. Been smacked in the head with a machete. Uh, I had my jaw broke in three places. My nose has been broke about 40 times. You're not thinking about yourself and your future right now. Listen, mate, I ain't sitting here staring at the fucking two lights all right, yeah? Just to do you a favour, yeah? Because you're doing your job, yeah? But you ain't thinking of me at all, yeah? When I left Philippines, I felt very shocked about what I have seen and um, the amount of alcohol that people are consume and the, the effects that they normally uh, goes with it. Can't sleep on my back anyway, yeah? No, you right? listen to us. Staring at the two lights, yeah? Ain't doing me no favours, is it? All you're thinking is about is you and your career, mate. Is that not me at all. Do you know you've broken your neck? No, yeah, I knows, do yeah. know I've broken yeah, okay. my neck, so yeah? If, if you... But I can't sleep on my back, yeah? OK. And I ain't going to start trying to sleep on my back, yeah? Just do you a favour. No, it's to do you... You and your job, yeah? It's nightmare. Like, you got poor people in the front of you, they're all drunk, and you need to keep an eye on all of them because they need to be monitored, maybe they may, the other more need to be awake, more awake. You have to come to them every 15 minutes or every half an hour, just make sure they're still breathing or something. They're like the worst patients you're gonna have. This is life, my life, yeah? It's for life, yeah? Yeah. Your job is just a career. So you're concerned about your neck, are you? That's why you need to keep still. Otherwise, you can lose all sensation from here downwards. Yeah. Be on a breath. You know, you know, like Superman. Don't you know the guy that played Superman. You could be him. Yeah. I've turned the lights off, so it's a bit better. Yeah, now. and I still can't sleep on my back. What part of that can't you get? Me? Listen to me now. If you listen to me now. Get my clothes. I'm going home. You've got to this up, can you? Listen, mate, right? I don't care what I can do and what I can't do, yeah? You're not fucking going to make me, yeah? Fall asleep on my back, yeah? Staring at all these fucking lights, yeah? Yeah? You're not going to make me do that, yeah? You can't make me do that, yeah? What? Right? Yeah? If you right. start walking, you could, be, you could become paralysed. Watch them. You probably never watch will them. go home. You're going to have to sit there and watch me all night. Yeah, because every time You're I fuck Hey, Sean. Yeah. Sean, no, no, no one's uh, going to make you do anything. So if you try to get up and remove all this, no one's going to stop you, OK? Because you're your own boss. But if you do that, there's every chance you might paralyse yourself from the neck down. So you just need to understand we're trying to do this for your, your future, all right? No, I don't think you are, you are trying to do that, yeah? Well, you've got a broken neck, my friend. You. Yeah, I don't want to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah? Yeah? But I ain't going to sit here staring at all the lights in the hallway, yeah? But there's very little I can do about that right now, but there is a bed upstairs that's getting ready for you, all right? Come on, then. let's go. That's not that easy, Sean. Maybe it'll be an hour or more, and then you go upstairs. So right now I'm going to walk away and I'm not coming back again because I've got another patient coming in. Can you send me over then? No. You've got a broken neck, mate. Can See you, you later. Me over? See ya. Oi! Alright. I'm okay. Hey, Sean. Listen, mate. Sean, 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 you've got a broken yeah, neck. One way or the other. You've got a broken neck, Sean. If you roll over, paralyzed from the neck down. Do you understand? You leave me here, yeah? Staring up at the ceiling, yeah? That's... There's a light there, there's a light there. So how am I supposed to go to sleep? Maybe I'll give you a little something in your vein to help you sleep. How about that? A little something, about... it'll just calm you down how a little bit. Right. Should we get some lorazepam? Just calm down and try to cooperate with us because we're trying to help you, that's all. I am trying to cooperate. All right, well, right. Stay, stay calm. Wobbly, W-O-B-B-L-Y. <laughs> if any
anybody can speak Russian, please come to majors. If anybody in the department can speak Russian, please come to majors. <laughs> Hello, um, David. Yeah. Nice to meet you. My name's Ndav. I'm one of the doctors yeah. working here today. Yeah. Okay. I was just walking up, I was at church. Okay. I went and got myself a cigar, wanted to cheer myself up. I, I, I was just about to smoke it and I suddenly felt strange, mm -hmm. all cold and sure. everything. And then I just collapsed on the floor, just fell down and bashed my head. There was nothing to grab hold of. How long were you on the floor for, do you think? About a minute. About a minute? Yeah. 56 year old David collapsed in the street. This is the third time he's been to A&E after blacking out. Well, I'll, I'll clean it out first, and, um... It is nothing, isn't it? It's, it is fairly deep, actually. Yeah. Quite often in A&E, the presenting complaint is just one factor in, in a lot of um, uh, factors that have brought the patient in, and so usually sometimes you have to dig beneath the surface to get, to get down to the real problem. I had stopped drinking for a month, two months, actually, and uh, I started to have one to see what it was like, and then... I regretted it afterwards, I was sick. How uh, long ago was that when you had the drink? Oh, yesterday. I'll pop this on for the moment. Ooh. Yesterday you had yeah. the drink? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, but um, I didn't have anything today. I've not, not touched anything. I don't want to. I've got the money to, but I don't want to. My name's David Long. I'm an alcoholic. I could drink a bottle of brandy in the morning and a bottle of brandy in the evening. That's what I used to drink. So what time would you get up and start from drinking brandy? Oh, first thing in the morning. Any time from 7 o'clock onwards. I need to have a drink sometimes at 5 o'clock in the morning. OK, can you bend that knee for me? No, it's, it's broken, that one. When did that happen? 1956, this one. Just, uh, How did you do that? Plane crash. Uh, we took off from Carno Airport, hit a tropical storm, so we hit a tree just short of the runway and one of the engines caught fire with a crash. Mm -hmm. And most people were killed, including my mother. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. At the age of two, I survived an airplane crash in which my mother uh, was killed. That may have started it, I don't know. Do you have any questions for me? No, I was just saying, when I get, get out, I have a fight no, now. I, I won't have a fight now. They do actually, just there's something. Right, well, I'll, I'll, a ridiculous I'll... situation. I, I've, been try I've kept off drink for months and then this happens. I don't know. have one pint. If I'd been on the piss, I wouldn't mind it. That, that is what annoys me even more. Fine. We'll, we'll, we'll have a chat about that um, once we've got all the information together. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll see you shortly. Yeah. Do you drink to forget, David? Yeah, yes. And for pressure, pressure of work and things like that. My way of coping with life. I see other people getting on and I'm not. My father wanted me to be better because he was a self-educated person and he wanted me to excel at things, which I didn't do. Did you feel loved by your dad? Not really, no. He thought I was a failure. Tragic, it, it really is. It's, it's very difficult when someone's at that point to know what to, what, what to say, you know, what, what do you even say to that individual, you know? And it, and it seems almost, you know, kind of futile to kind of give him that bit of treatment that you know isn't really kind of touching what what needs to be dealt with egg maiden and sausage tomorrow morning man in the calf before I go home might even treat myself to a can of beer that's supposed to be good you know it helps you sleep Hello. Yes, Sean, what is it? Can you help me out, please? 
can't. We have to explain it to you, do we? You not get up from there. You have to keep it like that until we're going to take you up to the wall. Yeah, yeah? when? When? Well, they're, 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 when they're... I fucking cheese get asleep. Right. They're a bit busy right now, and then we're yeah, trying to hold them up in 20 minutes, 30 up. minutes. Too busy to fuck all, you Maybe what you need to do, you have to close your eyes, think about what happened to you and what's going to happen to you in the future. No, you're supposed to be sorting out an injection for me, yeah? Yeah. But no, he's too busy to do that, isn't he? To, to come down a bit, yeah? Too busy to do that, isn't he? <laughs> it's all full of shit. <laughs> oh. Hello? Yes. I do think it's like any of you off, right? Yeah, but he's told me he's going to get me an injection to help me sleep. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to prepare now. Sorry, son. Yeah, I really don't miss you, yeah, so you know that, yeah? yeah? I like your own doing the job, right? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Much obliged to you, yeah? I don't blame you for it. Just close your eyes and so maybe you can go to sleep. Sean underwent three hours of surgery to repair his broken neck. My GP said to me that I was very, very, very lucky. And I said to her, why is that then? And she said to me, because you was within an inch of being paralysed from the neck now. <laughs> Scary, isn't it, really? Since I've come out of hospital, I have maybe one or two cans. That's it. And that's not like every day. That's like when I can be bothered to go to the shop and buy them. Most of the time, I just sit in my bedroom now, watching telly. Can't hurt myself in there laying on my bed, can I? <laughs> Alcohol so readily available. You know, I've seen what it can do. I've, I've seen the long-term damage. And I've seen where a glass of wine at dinner can end up killing somebody. I've looked after somebody that has drunk so much, he actually bled to death in front of me. And, you know, it goes from having this nice bottle of wine at dinner to losing your life because of alcohol. It must be so awful to have to get up every day and the only way you can face reality is to drink. Now, well, once this is done, you should be able to go. That does break my heart. It really, really does. I think it's, you know, no one wants to drink and be like that. No one wants to smell of alcohol and shake every day. Um, no one wants to have a life that they have to blot out, that's so serious they have to blot it out. You know, it's, it's not a life at all. Alcoholism is an illness. Alcohol addiction is an illness. No, I still occasionally binge drink, but I'm trying. As it's Lent, I'm trying to give it up. OK, we're all done. Booze has ruined my life. I've basically wasted my life. Will it kill you? Eventually it will, yes, because of the cirrhosis of the liver. Doesn't that worry you? No, I'll be joining my mother. You know, in a &E, it generally is a patch-up, put a plaster on it, because I think that's all we are able to do. You know, we'll, we'll fix the physical side of things. You know, the shakes, the fits, 
and we'll replenish what they've lost through alcohol, but I think in the long term we try and guide people to the right services. But I think usually in A&E it's a plaster. Everybody can be saved. His right side of the brain, he's got a part missing. And I keep laughing in shock. I need to move this man back on the bed. He's really quite heavy. We give it a good go, but we can't always help everybody.